Our skeletons are made up of lots of different bones that protect our organs and help us to move. We're born with about 270 of them, and nearly all of our bones are connected to other ones. This number slowly decreases to about 206 by the time we've grown up. The exact amount of them can vary a little. About 1 in every 200 people is born with an extra rib, for instance. By the time we reach adulthood, our bones have stopped getting longer, although their density and strength still changes throughout our lives. But every one of your bones can be broken, including the smallest one in your ears. Even the hyoid, a V-shaped bone at the base of the tongue which isn't connected to anything else, can be damaged. Still, people manage to fracture it very rarely. It makes up for only 0.002% of all cases. But for most of your bones, injuries happen more often, and there are thousands of ways you could damage them. In fact, it's possible to break several bones even while playing video games. The world record is three bones broken when playing a simulation video game. The overexcited player twisted their arms the wrong way, and ouch, they went snap. Getting even a small fracture is not a fun experience. Still, it rarely disrupts your life all that much. But imagine you ended up with a lot of broken bones all at once. Like the ones in all four of your arms and legs, for example. Sounds unlikely? Well, it could happen in a number of ways. You might end up in a serious car accident. You could tumble badly down a mountain slope while snowboarding. Or just imagine you were one of the people building the Egyptian pyramids, and you ended up experiencing firsthand just how heavy those massive blocks were. So there you are, immobile, having broken all your limbs riding your snowboard. First of all, let's count the exact number of bones you could break here. An arm contains three bones, one in the upper arm and two forearm bones. There are 27 bones in your hand, and each of your legs contains 30 bones overall. So, if you were to damage every single bone in all of your limbs at the same time, you'd have about 120 broken bones. That's more than half of all the bones in your entire body. The collarbone is the one that people break most often. But surprisingly, this time, yours is fine. That's odd because it doesn't take that much effort to harm it, especially if you've been rolling down a mountain slope. Yahoo! Yahoo! Besides this one, here are some of the most common bones that people break. The humerus, ulna, and radius, which are your arm bones, and also the tibia and fibula, which are, you guessed it, two of your leg bones. So if you break both arms and legs, it'll surely be these top five bones that need treatment. The bad news is that your leg contains the most painful bone to break, the femur bone. It's located in your thigh. When damaged, it causes the most pain, probably because it's one of the strongest bones too. The femur is actually the longest and strongest bone you've got in your body. So breaking both of them at once would be no fun at all. Another problem is that if you broke all your limbs, you'd also damage the worst bone. Elbows are the worst ones to fracture because they're really difficult to heal. There's not enough tissue to pin the bones in place. And by the time the elbow's almost ready to be moved again, it's already started to stiffen. So, what exactly happens when you break a bone? Ow! Yeah, that too, but first, you might hear a cracking sound. You'll probably still be able to move your limbs, but hey, not too fast. Just because you can move it doesn't mean it's not broken. Deformity, swelling, and pain are also the telltale signs that something's definitely wrong. It'll probably be pretty painful, but luckily there are other things that hurt a whole lot more. Um, luckily? Hmm. How much it hurts also depends on how badly you've broken your bones. The fracture might be an incomplete one. Complete, where the bones separate into two parts, or even segmented, where there are three or more pieces. In some cases, people don't experience almost any pain when they break their bones. Plenty of people have suffered serious injury while skiing. But some of them not only stand up afterwards as if nothing has happened, but even continue having fun all day long. They might notice that they've broken a bone only a few hours later. This kind of thing often happens with kids. Their bones are softer, and it takes them less time to heal. Children's bones have a thicker, fibrous membrane that helps their bones to recover. Now, here's the good news. The pain won't go on forever, and you're not likely to suffer all that much. Normally, the doctors will put a cast on your fracture. Sometimes a broken bone doesn't actually need a cast, but then there's the risk it won't heal right. 
Once the cast is on your fracture, the recovery is almost pain-free, although it's usually accompanied by a lot of itching and smelling. The cast can start to smell pretty bad, and the more you try to wash the odor away, the stronger it gets. Keeping it dry is essential, so you'll probably have to cover it up somehow. But a flimsy DIY cover is not the best option. A tight cast makes it harder for blood to circulate, and if it's too tight, it can even cut off the circulation completely. Tingling is a sign there's way too much pressure inside the cast. Having all that plaster on doesn't mean you'll be too hot. In fact, it can actually be the other way around. Uncovered toes, for instance, are likely to get cold, so you're going to need warm socks. With both of your arms and legs broken and wrapped in those casts, you won't be able to do much for yourself, so you're going to need a devoted assistant. Taking a shower without any support when you've got four casts on doesn't seem possible. Going to the bathroom without someone's help is not an option either. Even getting yourself a snack just like normal is a challenge you're not likely to win. Everyday activities like paying the bills, getting dressed, and even petting your dog are going to be off the agenda for a while. Scrolling through social media could also be tricky. If things are really serious, fractures can require an operation to install some steel elements, such as rods, plates, screws, and pins. These will essentially become your new body parts. With all those metal implants in your limbs, going through airport security might become more difficult. You'll be able to walk again, but you're going to be setting off a lot of alarms from now on. Some people claim that a bone becomes stronger when you get a fracture. In fact, it does get a little bit stronger, but only while it's healing. This is thanks to something called a callus that protects the bone during recovery. The growth of a callus is a sign that your immune system is coming to the rescue. It delivers blood that clots at the place where the fracture is. This gradually becomes harder and, after a while, turns into new bone material. Thanks to the callus, your bones will eventually get back to normal again after a few months. But in some cases, it could take as long as a year for this whole healing process to be completed.